All right, comic buffs, welcome back to Cafeteria Drops Minute-ish Reviews. Today we're jumping into one of my favorite properties of all time, so buckle up for a wild ride as we dive into the last Ronin 2, Re-Evolution number one, written by Tom Waltz and Kevin Eastman, with art by Esau and Isaac Escora. Does this sequel live up to the quality of its predecessor, or is it ultimately a letdown? Stay tuned for my analysis. Before we get into the review, I just wanted to express my gratitude for the support you guys have been giving my channel while I'm out on spring break. Once we're back in school, we'll get some school lunch goodness in here as well. All right, let's jump right into the first issue of The Last Ronin 2, Re-Evolution. So we kick things off with Casey Marie, daughter of Casey and April, leading a resistance against New York gangs, namely the Yorkville Warriors. She's all grown up and kicking butt, but unfortunately her crew is outnumbered. While they win this battle, her team is exhausted and needs more help to fend off these guys in the future. The opening fight scene is extensive enough and establishes Casey as a force to be reckoned with. It's a nice touch that she wears a hockey-like mask, like her father did in combat. I guess the training she received under Michelangelo during the events of the first series has paid off. Then we meet the new Ninja Turtles, Odin, Yi, Moja, and Uno whose names all mean one in different languages. They're training under Casey Marie, learning about the rivalry between the Saki and Yoshi clans and the events of the previous Last Ronin series while honing their combat skills. My first impression of the new Ninja Turtles is, honestly, I don't like them. I know that sounds harsh, but could any character really live up to the lineage of Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, and Raphael? I don't think so. Plus their names all mean one, really? The original turtles were named after Renaissance artists and the best they could do is this? I'm definitely not a fan. Meanwhile, an older April O'Neil is managing an underground operation while the turtles race home after being out late to avoid getting grounded. After getting caught by Casey Marie, their punishment gets interrupted by a news broadcast about rising crime rates and a mayor who's more interested in sweeping it under the rug. Foreshadowing? Probably. When Commander Zaragoza, who leads resistance military operations, contacts Casey Marie for help, she reluctantly lets the New Turtles join in on the fight. Then we finally get to see the New Turtles in action, who are excited about putting their training to good use, so they all hurry to the fight against the gangs in the area. They make short work of the gang members attacking an outpost, but things take a dark turn when Odin freezes up and gets turned to stone after getting hit in the head with a sledgehammer. What? And that's where issue number one ends. Overall, the story's serviceable, but it feels a bit cluttered with so much going on. Plus, the new turtles don't really stand out because of a lack of characterization. In my opinion, narrative-wise, this issue is all over the place, with flashbacks, gang attacks, and does not introduce the new turtles in a way that engages the reader or makes them care about them. The characterization of everyone involved is lackluster, and I'm most disappointed by the new turtles. What happened? Now let's talk visuals. The trade dress is top notch with glossy pages and a slick cover. The book yet again has that premium feel we've come to expect from this series. Holding the comic in your hand feels substantial which is great when compared to other regular comic issues. It lets the audience know that this is something special. But I have to be honest, the art inside by Esau and Isaac Escorza doesn't quite do it for me. Characters look rough and stiff, lack detail and dynamism that we expect. Now look, I took issue with this with the first series as well, and when they swapped artists for the first series, I was not a fan of what I saw. 
the same issues pop up here as they did in the first series. Faces look weird in some panels. The quality of hands is all over the place. All the gang members look like generic thugs from Walker, Texas Ranger. And Casey Marie's look goes from masculine to feminine, mysteriously between panels. However, props to Ben Bishop for his flashback sequences. His art really shines. Why couldn't he take the lead in pencils for this series? And Luis Antonio Delgado's colors? On point. But overall, the visuals are a mixed bag. With the Escorza brothers falling short and capturing a consistent and visually appealing look throughout the entirety of the book. So, my final thoughts. The last Ronin 2 re-evolution is just okay. The visuals leave something to be desired, and the storytelling is not as gripping as the first series. Here's hoping they step it up in future issues and work really hard to keep the audience engaged. All right, well, that about wraps it up. Until next time, comic book fans, keep the faith and stay hungry for those epic adventures. We'll see you with the next one.